Hey guys, what's up? Spectre here, and I'm back with my two-part Ultimate PS4 mod list of 2019. Between parts 1 and 2, there are just about 40 mods waiting to be added to your load order. I'll have everything written and timestamped in the description below, as well as my Ultimate mod list from last year in that description. I try to touch every aspect of the game, from combat to armor, weapons, magic, graphic mods, and more. So without further ado, let's begin. The first mod on this massive list is The Great Cities by Soldier of War. It's a beautiful and lore-friendly overhaul of some of Skyrim's largest cities. The mod creator has taken into account the architecture of each hold and incorporated those design cues into each overhaul. This is great for any player who's looking to breathe new life into Skyrim after seeing these cities so many times. Not only does it add to Dawnstar, Dragonbridge, Falkreath, Morthal, Rorikstead, and Winterhold, but it also adds merchants to some of these sites. This is a must-have mod in my opinion, and a great start for our ultimate list. Haste is a mod packed with fixes and patches meant to fix some of Skyrim's issues and missteps. For example, animals can no longer report crimes with this mod enabled, which was a weird choice in the first place. Enemy chase distance has been reduced, the silly spinning animation upon death is removed, and with this mod you can craft lockpicks in batches, and a few other common sense changes and fixes. This mod almost feels like a compilation in and of itself, and it's definitely a must-have for an elevated Skyrim experience. Animation Rings has been a mainstay on this channel and has allowed me to make more engaging Skyrim videos like my character build videos, by enabling me to perform various animations in-game. With this mod, you'll find a box of rings in Ferengar's office, and after equipping them and pressing the sneak button, you'll be able to perform different emotes. This is great for those of you who like capturing screenshots of your character, or who just want to roleplay a bit more. One thing I hate worrying about in Skyrim is my horse. I've lost too many to dragon attacks or to perilous cliffs. The solution? Mirage Summoned Mount. This mod will add a spell tome that you can find on the counter at the Drunken Huntsman. It will give you the ability to summon Mirage, your new ghost steed, capable of traveling at fast speeds and walking on water. She'll disappear when you aren't using her, freeing you up to resummon her when you do need some speedy travel. Mirage Summon Mount, it's kind of like Uber if you drove yourself, and the car was a dead horse. It's nothing like Uber, it's just a great mod. Next one. Mage Grip Spell is another old favorite. It's a simple mod that adapts the Vampiric Grip Spell and allows any mage to use it. It never fails to feel or look badass, and it's my favorite standalone spell mod, and you can find it deep in Silverdrift Lair. And while that's a bit of a trek, it's definitely worth it. If magic isn't a thing and you prefer a sword and shield, effective blocking has you covered. With this mod enabled, you'll be able to block 90% of incoming damage, making sword and shield builds much more viable. You'll be able to block spells, arrows, and even dragon fire. You're not the only one receiving these buffs, however, as all NPCs will see the same benefits, making combat much more realistic and challenging. It hasn't left my load order since featuring it on the channel, and it's a mod you shouldn't miss out on. Modified Inn's City and Town is a great addition to great cities. It changes the interior of places like the Drunken Huntsman and the Retching Netch, making them feel more lived in and lore friendly. It's also just another way to inject life into a game that we've been playing for far too long. Crypt of the Old Guard is a home that I featured before, and it's one of the best designed player homes available to PS4 players. It's meant for vampire playthroughs, and has a bunch of thoughtful touches to really drive that home. I love when modders tell stories with their design, and this Dawnguard Crypt turned vampire lair does just that. You'll find all the amenities that you'll expect from a quality player home, as well as some custom features. You'll find it south of Riften, down the hill from the Shadowstone. This is great for you bloodsuckers out there, and it was featured on one of my player build videos. Sable 17's Magical College of Winterhold is an absolute masterpiece. I featured it a few times before, and even use it on PC when I'm kidding out my game with some of the best mods. And while not all of the assets make the jump from PC to PS4, you can still bet that this is the best version of the college that you can experience on PS4. It makes the school actually feel magical, 
with set pieces and touches that are thoughtfully created and placed. Since originally downloading it, it's never left my load order, and it will make a wonderful addition to yours. Dense Grass is a simple mod that's made it into my top graphics mod lists before. It works with other visual overhauls, and it seeks to make the grass in Skyrim a bit more lush without sacrificing performance. I use it on my launch day PS4 and have never encountered issues with it. Every time I've deactivated it to test out other mods, the game has just felt bare. It's almost like this is how the foliage should have looked all along. The Midden Expanded is another great mod if you're looking to spice up the College of Winterhold, only this one isn't geared towards magic users alone. It adds new dungeons for any player to explore and loot with puzzles, bosses, and more. Without spoiling too much, you'll find well-crafted spaces, unique armor and weapons, and challenging fights deep below the college. It's packed with lore-friendly quests and adventures, and it's a must-have for players looking for something fresh after spending so much time completing the vanilla game. Heterochromia Complete is another mainstay of the channel and essential to rolling new characters for me. It adds literally hundreds of new eye color options to the game with no issues. For those of you tired of the same limited offerings in vanilla Skyrim, this mod could really change up your look. Make sure to give it a go next time you start a new game or just want to spruce up your Dragonborn. I don't think Orcs, Argonians, or Khajiit get enough love, and Beast Race Hair Overhaul is a mod that helps fix that. It adds a bunch of humanoid hair options to the Beast races in Skyrim, giving you even more customization next time you're in the character creator. It simply ports them over from the other character models, so you shouldn't have any issues trying this one out for yourself. Supreme Storm Special Edition makes snowstorms more intense, creating almost whiteout conditions with a reduced draw distance and added wind bluffs. This mod is great for those of you who want a more rugged experience when traveling across Skyrim's more harsh regions. It also pairs well with a mod that comes up later on in this list. Scholar's Eye is a quality of life mod that adds a feature that should be in all Elder Scrolls games moving forward. It adds a faint magical glow to books that can teach you or raise a skill or spell. No longer will you have to waste time checking books to see whether or not you'll get a boost, as this mod makes it apparent from a distance. I only wish that the glow would go away once you read a specific book, but due to Sony's limitations, that's not possible. Gotta love Sony for that. Rain and Snow Effects is a great complement to Supreme Storms, as it adds another little flourish of realism to the game. As you're exposed to the elements, be it snow or rain, your character will actually accumulate snow on their body or water on your clothing. There are even dripping particle effects that fade over time or when you head indoors. It's a nice little feature that surprisingly didn't come in the vanilla game, and while it isn't game-changing, it's a cool little thing that you won't take for granted once you have it in your game. Realm of Lorcan is a custom start mod that goes above and beyond that description. It adds a magical new space for you to create your character and really choose who you want to be. It replaces the execution opening of the game and allows you to choose where you'll begin your journey, what items you'd like to take, and what stones you'd like to use. It even adds a new boons and curses mechanic that gives you all new perks and even negative blessings for an added challenge. You can even choose from classic RPG classes to simplify the beginning of your adventure. It's an incredibly useful mod, and it'll keep you from riding in that damn carriage ever again. Recolor Replacer Pack will recolor some of the most popular armor sets in the game, upping the texture quality and giving them a better overall aesthetic. It covers all generic jewelry, gives you darker ebony armor, more frosty looking stallrim armor, polished steel, more gilded elven armor, and more polished Nordic armor. It's a great way to elevate the graphical fidelity and overall look of vanilla armor, which is really all we can do on PS4 for the most part. Again, gotta love Sony for that one. Horse Riding First Person is a truly unique mod in that I haven't seen too many people trying to tackle this issue on console. It allows you to ride a horse in first person, and return to third person by drawing your sword. I found it to be surprisingly bug-free and more immersive than solely using third person. I don't see it being recommended enough, so definitely give it a try. Summonable Dwarven Automatons is a pretty self-explanatory mod that allows the user to, well, you get it. 
You'll have three different types to choose from, and they'll level up with the player up to level 200. You can summon Ballastae that walk on mechanized legs, Dwarven Spiders, and last but not least, Crossbow Dwarven Spheres. They're incredibly useful in combat, and do admittedly look great when they're on your side and not trying to kill you. I loved watching them roll around behind me and joining me on my quests. This is great for those of you who love Dwemer aesthetics and are on the hunt for deadly new pals to summon. And that's it for part 1 of my ultimate mod list for 2019. I'll be back with part 2 very soon, which will bring about 20 more mods that I can't play this game without. Again, everything is in the description, and if you think I missed something, you can always check out last year's list, which is packed full of mods that I still use in conjunction with some of these newer ones. Sound off with some of your top picks for the year below as well. Make sure to get subbed for more Skyrim content, and even videos about upcoming RPGs like Cyberpunk 2077. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.